Hey everyone, for this tutorial on ecological networks, we're going to talk about one of the most common metrics um, used in identifying structure within networks, and that's the value of modularity, okay? So first we're going to talk about what is modularity and why you might be interested in measuring it. Second, I'm going to go over a common mathematical definition of modularity. And finally, I'm going to end with a simple example of this um, of how modularity is optimized. Essentially, it's how we would go about measuring it. Okay, so let's start off talking about why are we interested in modularity. Okay, so let's take for example, um, if we're ever interested in whether our network um, is composed of different groups or if we suspect it um, has a strong group structure and we want to identify these groups, um, you'd be interested in measuring modularity because it essentially helps you identify groups that are embedded within a network. Okay, and then so just by taking a look at this network right here, you can already kind of just eyeball it and see that we've got two groupings right here. Okay, and so the way that kind of a verbal definition of mod modularity is that it looks for sets of nodes that interact with each other more frequently than expect expected by random chance. Okay, so now let's go into kind of the way that like more of a mathematical definition modularity, okay? So we're gonna stick with our same network. And one of the things that I wanna mention about modularity is that it requires an optimization approach to actually get the value, okay? So that'll become clear um, as I go over the definition. So the first thing that you would go about doing for calculating modularity is that you pick a way to partition up the network. So for example, in this network up here, we'll create a partition right here, okay? Seems to be a good partition. And then what we do is we calculate the mod modularity based on that partition, okay? So we'll go to our definition of modularity in the bottom and you can see that, so modularity is essentially represented by Q and it represents for each of the modules, you look at the observed fraction of links in the group, okay? minus the expected fraction of links in the group, okay? So again, we're just looking for um, groupings with a high density of links, okay? More so than expected by random chance, okay? So the way that we actually go about calculating it, is this equation down here, and then, so just to note, this is newman Gervin's uh, method for calculating modularity, and it's, it's a pretty widespread measure, so it's a good one to um, kind of get familiar with. So. One, let's just take a look at the basic part of the equation, okay? So let's first calculate the observed fraction of links in the group, okay? And the way that we do that is one, for each partitioning that we do for each group, okay? So we've got these two different groups. We're gonna look at the number of links between nodes in module S, for example. That's the notation, so let's just take this as module S. We count up the number of links between nodes. So in this case, it's gonna be one, two, three links. Okay, divided by the number of links in the network. So there's seven links total in this network. Then we want to calculate our expected fraction of links in the group. And to do that, we subtract it by the sum of the degrees of, of nodes in module S. Okay, so the way that we do that, so the term degree is something I haven't gone over yet. And so each node has a characteristic degree, and it just is essentially a measure of the number of links it has. Okay, so for example, this node right here has a degree of two, okay, because it has two links. So we sum up the degrees for this module, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So this node has three particular links, okay? So we'd have a value of seven divided by two times the total number of links in the network squared, and that's gonna give us um, an approximation of the expected fraction of links in the group, okay? And then we'd essentially, it's essentially gonna be the same thing on this side for this particular partition. We'd add them up and get our value of modularity. Then what happens is that you use an algorithm to repeat um, this process until the solution is optimized. So for example, a new partition would be created in the network, let's say right here, okay? So we've got this new partition. Modularity would be calculated again, and then essentially this process continues to go until um, modularity is no longer increasing, okay? So let's go through kind of a worked example 
of this. Okay, this is just a simple, straightforward example. I'm gonna start off with everything on the left-hand side. So let's say we create a partition right here. Again, we have all of our necessary information in this definition, and what we find is the number of links between nodes in module S1. So we've partitioned it into S1 and S2. We've got one link, okay, divided by the number of links in the network is seven. Now we sum up the, the number of degrees in the node, within the nodes in each module. So in this case, it'd be one, two, three, four, okay? That matches up with our equation. Calculate it out, and then we do repeat the same thing with the second module, okay? And we end up getting a value of 0 0.12, okay? Now, after that modularity value is being calculated, we create a new partition, okay? So now we've got the partition going down the middle, and we just repeat the process, okay? So again, it's kind of like we talked about before. Number of links between the node is one, two, and three within this module minus the sum of the degrees of the nodes in the network. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, divided by two times the number of links in the network, and we get a value of 0 0.18. And module two, you'll notice the structure is exactly the same, so we get the same value. And we end up having a modularity value of 0 0.36, okay? So this is a better partition than the one before. So we continue, um, continue going about this and repeating, putting in different partitions and a common um, algorithm used in ecological network research is this simulated annealing algorithm. And essentially the benefit of it is that it's kind of a brute force method. So if you have a small network, it is the most accurate, okay, for identifying groupings within your network. But if you have like many social networks have like thousands of nodes, simulating annealing no longer becomes possible, okay? Now, one thing I wanna point out too is that this value of modularity in and of itself is a bit meaningless, okay? So it's, a, it's really important to use an appropriate null model to determine whether the network is more modular than you would expect by random chance. And so the value that you actually, what you get there is um, this measure called the relative modularity. Okay, and then so talking about null models is a little bit outside of this tutorial, but essentially it controls for the diversity and connectance within a network to actually see if um, you're observing a network that's more modular. Okay, so hope that tutorial was helpful on calculating modularity.